We'll call it a regular meeting in the Noam Economic Development Authority for Tuesday, February 13, 2018, 8 a.m. to order. First item on agenda is roll call. We do have a quorum, so we'll go to item number two, to approval of the minutes from the annual EDA meeting held on January 9, 2018, and special EDA meeting held on February 2, 2018. I'll move it. I'll second it. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number three, mm -hmm. from the Noam Economic Development Coordinator regarding activities during the month of January 2018. Brian? Brian Toll, Noam Economic Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, you have my uh, activity report for the m month of January in your packet. I would like to highlight a couple of things. We've been... Um, visiting with uh, the people at Windings regarding a potential expansion. And they uh, have been talking with, I've been talking with Seth Visser, who is their director of operations regarding how tax increment financing and tax abatement work and, and what, what they would need to go through to, to access those, pro, those uh, incentives. Also uh, been working with Eric Bodie who is who has started a data storage business and is looking at accessing the Heartland incentive um, program you know, for a uh, electric rebate and then also um, visiting with a someone who is looking at New Alm for uh, to start a new business a, a, a Jan Carlson who is uh, <coughs> looking to start a mental health care practice in New Ulm um, and what New Ulm could potentially offer to her. And then finally, uh, I've been visiting with Josh South, <coughs> who is a CFO of Artex in Redwood Falls. And Artex is a manufacturer of manure spreaders and trailers. And they do a lot of work with DLC manufacturing. And DLC is the one who um, said you should call these people because uh, we do a lot of work for them they're expanding so Mr. South indicated that they were expanding and they hadn't decided whether they would expand in Redwood Falls and we invited them to expand in in New Ulm as well in a, on a lot in the airport industrial park right next to where DLC is buying a, a lot so DLC is expanding in in the, our airport industrial park and we invited them to expand right next to them. Thank you. Any questions for Brian? I know the career fair is coming up and there's some changes going on with that. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, the career fair is, is April 4th uh, of this year. <coughs> and, um, you know, there's some, there's some minor changes. Um, we're we're going to be providing lunches to the to the participants, to the to the people that are uh, exhibiting, uh, not to the students, but to the exhibitors, and um, you know, we usually see fifty to fifty-five exhibitors, and we have um, another change is that we're having both eighth graders and tenth graders come. So last year we had eighth graders from just New Ulm Public. This year, eighth graders from public, cathedral, MVL, and and then the Sleepy High schools. So I think it's like four or five hundred students, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when we had just tenth graders, it was usually around three twenty-five to three fifty. So we think it'll be four fifty to five hundred with okay. eighth graders. So thank you. That's a that's a significant amount of students that will come to and visit with our local it's business. It's a great fun event to see, have the kids see what we actually do in our community. So, yep. mm -hmm. now, you know, you, the, the, you drive by the buildings and you wonder, well, what the heck is, goes on it, you know, and you don't know. Mm -hmm. So this, it's good for the businesses to uh, let the students know what they do. The businesses like to show off a little bit too, and yeah. they make it kind of fun for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. I just wanted to add one thing too. I 
being the appointed member of the EDA, I did attend my first EDC meeting this past week. <coughs> so, uh, um, I don't want to, I want to let you know I'm not neglecting those duties. So, um, and uh, the one thing I just recall um, in the discussions during that meeting was the fact that uh, the EDC board would like to invite the, uh, the assistant city manager uh, to, to, to their meetings and, and get involved after that position is filled too. So I, I think looking forward to some coordination and cooperation going forward. So. Yeah, in addition to Dave Snowbrook. Yeah, yep. yep, so. Should that be a future standing agenda item since it's new, a report from you? I, well, Brian, Brian. Brian's kind of covering the bases, but uh, you know, I think okay. uh, I just thought it's just, uh, you know, so you I'm just getting my feet wet too. So maybe Brian and I can coordinate too, yeah. if there's any additional yeah. information yeah. we'd okay. like to share or whatever as we go forward, so. The agenda item will be on, so anything that pertains to that agenda item, if it's yep. a report from our own okay. membership, can be done at that time. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. I'll make a motion accepting the New Ulm Economic Development Corporation Coordinator's Report regarding activi activities during the month of January 2018. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Polls no. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 4, from the EDA staff regarding administrative activities during the month of January 2018. Heather? All right, good morning. Um, <clears throat> note on the Section 8 report on pages 1 through 5, uh, we had 85 vouchers on the program for the month of January. <coughs> Housing assistance payments, uh, disbursements from HUD exceeded payments to landlords by just over $1,000 for the month. Administrative fee disbursements exceeded expenses by uh, about $1,200 in January. Um, note the unaudited balances on pages three and four. And on page five, note uh, 84 vouchers on the program as of February 1st with a waiting list of 78. Um, and staff uh, continues to issue new vouchers to um, try and get those numbers up. Um, I'm hopeful with the budget that Congress just passed um, that we may see a slight increase in funding. It sounds like they increased domestic spending. Um, but we haven't received any notice from HUD yet. Heather, is this, this limited by funding then, not necessarily access? Yeah, um, we, we are able to fund about 70% of our vouchers right now with our current funding, so I'm hoping that will increase and we'll be able to help more families. <clears throat> Moving on to the public housing report um, on pages six through nine. Um, for the current fiscal year, uh, program expenditures have exceeded revenues by about $2,000. Uh, Broadway House is fully leased with 46 on the waiting list, and the family units are fully leased with 37 on the waiting list. Moving on to the EDA fund, on page 10 of your report, um, note current cash assets of just under $620,000. Uh, we do have a sale pending for the spec house at 633 Fender Drive. Um, the original closing date was on or before April 2nd. Uh, got a contact from the realtor yesterday. They're hoping to close mid-March. Um, we have staging paid through March 5th, and I've requested for the staging to be removed at that time. Um, so we'll see no further invoices for that. Um, I'll also note this isn't on the report uh, that Commissioner Brom, myself, as well as Brown County Commissioner uh, Dave Borkert are leaving today to head up to Wilmer for our first Housing Institute retreat. Um, that'll take place tonight and all day tomorrow. Um, so we're anxious to <coughs> get our feet wet with that and, and see what opportunities uh, we might be able to make happen through that program. I do have one opening for another team member, and we have a couple people in mind. I think we're going to go to the retreat, get a little more information, and then come back and <coughs> try and get that um, last team person in place. And this is an 18-month program, very comprehensive, and... It's uh, going to allow us to uh, get more involved and become edu better educated in all kinds of different programs as they relate to housing from federal down to regional uh, and even maybe establishing local sort of initiatives for housing. So 
um, uh, looking at their track record, and I think, is this their sixth year, I believe? It's the sixth. Mm -hmm. um, they've done some pretty, um, pretty good things in the communities that have participated in the past. So we're hopeful that uh, we're paired up with a team from Gaylord and Sibley County. So they're kind of uh, our neighbors and, and they'll, we'll be getting together um, in the interim between these retreat sessions to kind of collaborate and bounce different ideas off each other and work on our respective issues in our communities as it relates to housing. So. All right, uh, moving on then to the property, property Rehabilitation Loan Program on pages 11 and 12 of your report, available funds at this time of about $243,000. Uh, there was a new inquiry last month, but no application um, has been received at this time. And then moving on to the Rental Property Fund on page 13 of your report, uh, cash assets there of $78,000. And uh, moving on to the Garden Terrace report on pages 14 and 15. Uh, Garden Terrace currently has 84 units leased with 68 on the waiting list. Um, currently has four vacancies. There was one turnover last month and they have received three move out notices for March. So they're having quite a bit of turnover there for whatever reason uh, lately. Any questions? Anybody have questions for Heather? I'll also note um, Garden Terrace staff did report um, the possibility of looking into window, window and patio door replacement and replacing furnaces in the garages. Um, I've asked for a little more information on that, and I'm waiting to hear back on, um, you know, if they're having problems with the windows or if they just feel um, due to their <coughs> age it's time to replace them. Um, so I, I didn't get any more information <coughs> prior to the meetings. <coughs> so Just I might report more on that next month. Are they saying like the entire building with the windows and doors? Well, um, it says uh, we need to look into window and patio door replacement and garage furnaces. And that's all the information I have. So yeah, I don't, like I say, I requested more information and I'm waiting to hear back. Has there ever been a complaint or an issue about fixing something before? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, this is the first. That's why I'm kind of wondering what's, you know, is there an issue? Or is something leaking? Or are they drafty? Or I'll offer a motion to approve the report. I'll second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5A, <coughs> consider motion authorizing payment of the public housing program claims. You have them in front of you there. Nothing really jumps out, right, Heather? The only thing is uh, we did have a replacement part on the elevator at Broadway House, so you'll see a Minnesota elevator <coughs> invoice there. That was something that um, was leaking and had reached the end of its life, so they recommended replacement. I think it was a packing seal or something, if I recall. Sounds good. I'll make a motion authorizing payment of the public housing program claims for February 13th, 2018 and order filed. Second. We got a motion and a second and the total is $17,877.84. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 6A, consider authorizing a transfer of ownership to the EDA property partial number 001.001.063. .001 Point ten point one hundred south adjacent to the Kiesling Park to the city of New Ulm for incorporation into the Kiesling Park. Brian? Yeah, this issue is on the agenda <coughs> simply uh, as we look at the ownership issue. It's, uh, it's an empty lot that the EDA uh, acquired, uh, probably a building on it many, many, many years ago, building tore down. Uh, it, it's been utilized by Keesling Park as open space uh, for their programming and displays. The EDA does have a lease with uh, Lamplighter for <coughs> out some area uh, basically on the alley for parking for the Lamplighter. In addition, there's a uh, airspace easement that uh, allows their awning 
and uh, above their windows uh, on, uh, on that side of the building, as well as the exhaust <coughs> <coughs> stovepipe, if you want to call it, out of their kitchen area that runs outside of their building up to the uh, rooftop. The EDA realizes $1,000 a year uh, revenue uh, from that lease to the lamplighter, and the park and rec realizes all the expenses for mowing the grass and keeping it clean and spraying for weeds and all the other things. Um, and looking just to clean up many different little things around the community, this was one of those that uh, has been sitting there. Uh, and uh, what I guess what we're proposing is that the uh, ownership of that empty lot uh, that the EDA owns uh, be transferred to the city uh, and utilized as a part of Keesling Park. Uh, the, the primary issue there is if the EDA were to sell that for development, the Keesling lot becomes very narrow, uh, not real appealing to be quite honest. It, it really needs that little grassy area to make it we look. can put an apartment building in there, are you yeah. saying, Brian? <laughs> we, we probably could put an apartment building in, uh, yeah. Four stories. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is a right of first refusal in the lease uh, to the lamplighter. They have waived that right of first refusal because this is a city uh, EDA to the city transaction. It's not open to the public. Uh, but if the city were to ever uh, envision selling that lot off uh, mm -hmm. uh, for an apartment or for uh, a business or whatever, uh, Lamplighter would have the first right uh, to purchase it at the price uh, agreed upon. So in, I think in the interest of uh, the, the Keesling Park, this is how this came up. Uh, because it's owned by two separate entities, uh, it makes more sense to make it a, a Keesling Park. Uh, now, you notice <clears throat> we, we've got options. We, uh, we brought this to the city council, you know, that the city would buy it for $25,000 because that's what the county has it assessed at. Uh, option two is at a cost of, you know, pick a number. Uh, and option three, which was brought up at the city council, was... Uh, EDA uh, basically just giving it to the city, donating at no cost. There might be some uh, rationale behind that. If you go down to uh, the second paragraph above primary issues, alternatives to consider, uh, the very last sentence in that second to the last paragraph there, uh, the, the EDA uh, realized uh, uh, Twenty-nine thousand five hundred fifteen dollars after selling the lot at the intersection of uh, of uh, Lee Avenue, which the city gave to uh, the EDA to jumpstart the initial housing uh, affordable housing project. We were going to do scattered site. We uh, looked at two houses. We got uh, on that on that lot uh, because it was like. Uh, just under seven tenths of an acre so we could put two homes on there we uh, went out to bid and the bids came in at like two hundred thousand dollars per house and that was not affordable so we had to work with the uh, with the contractors to get the price down and by that time the Milford Heights subdivision was underway and we said if we've got a subdivision over here why are we building a house two houses over here when we should be building two houses over in the subdivision. So that lot sat there for a while. The EDA then put it up uh, for sale, and uh, it was sold. A house is constructed on it, and uh, the city realized uh, $29,000 off of that land that was donated to the EDA by the city. Uh, the land itself used to be uh, a, a city park, North Highland Park, that was cut into uh, two pieces when the county redid the uh, you know, back road to Sleepy Eye. And uh, then it was cut into three par parcels when Lee Avenue cut the one section into two. So <clears throat> there is some history, you know, it's up to the EDA what, what they want to do. They could leave it just the way it is. You know, you could you know, transfer it to the city and put it in the park uh, ownership uh, for mm -hmm. Keesling Park. Uh, you can pick a number and negotiate it out. Just 
but I think the idea was to uh, set it up so that park becomes uh, reasonably sized so that it's usable as it's currently being used. So the rest is up to the uh, EDA and uh, ultimately the city council. So there's no plans that the city has to further develop that? They're, they're just going to basically leave it as green space? Because to me it represents, it makes a nice buffer between the park and the historic nature of the Kiesling House and then the adjoining business. Right. So, I, I mean, I it makes perfect I sense to me. <coughs> I don't think the EDA, why we got it in the first place, Les and I were trying to discuss that. Nobody really knows how we got our hands on it in the first place. So this makes perfect sense to transfer it to the city, I guess, in my opinion. I, I believe it was acquired and buildings were tore down and the EDA was the entity that could actually take a loss. You know, nobody's, you know, everybody else is sitting there saying, I'm not doing it because, you know, we're going to have $40,000 stuck into it by the time it's right. all said and done. So the EDA acquired it, took the buildings down. Um, so we're, we're basically discounting the EDA's cost of acquisition and demolition. And we're just going off of the 25000 just off of the current value, yeah, yeah. what the county would have it at. But uh, that that's just for information. <clears throat> if uh, if EDA wants to set a different price or wants to give it away free, that's up to you guys. I called the county assessor's office last week, and I said, really, $25,000 for that piece of property? we got a park on one side and you got a restaurant on the other. So kind of what we said, what are you going to build there? And And they said downtown lots are going high right now. So they're like five dollars and something a square foot down there, and and I said, yeah, I can understand maybe an empty lot, but this is not an empty lot, and what are you going to build this twenty-five feet uh, square lot? And and so I think the value is wrong. I think we, if we were to contest the value of this property, I think we'd we probably could get it lowered. But um, with my EDA hat on, I agree. I think we should uh, move forward at this, but I can't. In good conscience agree with a 25 but I also can't in good conscience agree to give it away either so I would probably split the difference is probably where I'm sitting well I guess my comment I'm the one that made it at the City Council meeting is to have EDA donate it the reason behind it is is I don't know how many years EDA has been collecting that thousand dollars and that absolutely doing nothing for it so if we've been doing it for 20 years, we probably got $20,000 out of it already anyway. So we probably, in a roundabout way, paid for it. <coughs> yeah, I agree, and I, I agree this, this transfer well, should take, take place. And, and um, given the history, it's good to know in regard to that, that other, uh, the, what the EDA realized off the sale of that residential lot um, whenever that took place, I assume back in the old mid-2000s or whatever. When Milford Heights was started, well, it'd be <coughs> 2008 is when we got Milford Heights going. So it'd have been a couple of years after that. Yeah, I think I was on back yeah. in the day. Yep. So that was through 2010. I remember that. Yep. And I agree. I, I think it d doesn't make any sense. I think we want to stay in a cooperative nature, if nothing else, between the city and the EDA and, and situations like this. I think this is going to be a benefit to the community. And, and it, it makes perfect sense to just dedicate it as parkland and be part of the Kiesling House. And to that end, I, I don't see, I don't have a problem setting uh, or having to set a price. I think we can donate it. That's my feeling on it. Um, a motion. Is that a motion? I, I'll make the motion. I'll, 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 <laughs> go that, I'll go out on that limb and I'll make the motion. Let's, let's move forward with this and let's, um, uh, you know, if the, if the park and rec have been <coughs> taking care of it, at least they should be able to realize the, the, the revenue, you know, associated with the rental lease and the easement that's on it. So my only hope is that nothing happens that would impair that relationship that we've had for quite a while with the lamplighter. Um, Cause I think that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is cramped quarters down in that section of town and, and that I have a feeling that it's worked well uh, up to this point and I just don't want this transaction to uh, upset the apple cart between the business and, and, and the city or whatever. So, but to that end, I'll make the motion to, to approve uh, donating the land to the city of New Ulm. 
Could I amend it and ask? I don't know what I'd say. Donate it to less whatever costs are involved. It costs form of the city. It's probably just technicality. Oh, I, filing the is there a deed? I don't know what public What's lands if there's a deed and yeah, the EDA owns it in their name and it would be transferred to the city. So there would be the paperwork aspect of it. Yeah. What is that? A buck sixty-five to file a deed with no consider. I mean, with that with minimal consideration. I think that yeah, uh, legal costs already. Yeah, the city attorney will pre prepare the document. So yeah, I don't know. 150 bucks. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll scratch that. It's not worth the technicality. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second the original motion. Donate the property. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? See none? A question. I'll, whoop, go ahead. When looking at that property, just as someone from the outside, I think they already think that it is Kiesling's property. I don't think they realize right. a part of that is the EDA. I didn't so, either. <laughs> yeah, so to keep that, it's beautiful, that whole area. So if they can keep it that way. Well, I know one of the things with uh, involved in the visioning uh, aspect of the community, that was one of the things they're looking for, too, is some green spaces downtown. And, and this just really fits that bill, too. They want, you know, uh, the downtown to be uh, a walking destination with various places to stop you know they put a picnic table there or a bench i think they've talked about things along that line and this that would just really fit in well with that, that too so could i suggest a, i don't know this for a fact but um a resolution might be in order just a, a regular motion versus a resolution I, th I think i would suggest i don't know for a fact that it's required but I would suggest that we, oh. we offer Air on the resolution side of caution. leave the reading to <laughs> donate the land to the city. I'll upgrade my motion <coughs> to a resolution. And I just yeah. have a feeling <laughs> it's a resolution. I, I offer the resolution then to donate the land uh, that's previously been legally described uh, to the New Alm, city of New Alm for the purposes of uh, adding it to the Keesling Park. I'll second the resolution. We got a motion and a second offered resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Heather, please call the roll. All right. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? No. <laughs> I don't have to vote yes. <laughs> All right. Commissioner right. Schwartz? You yes. <laughs> and President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Mm. Item 6B. Consider a change in price structure for the nine unsold mm -hmm. lots, Milford Heights, phase one. Just wasn't expecting that no vote. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me for a loop. <laughs> All right, uh, Commissioner Schultz requested that I add this item to the agenda this month. Um, the Milford Heights phase one subdivision con consists of 29 lots. Um, as of today, the EDA has sold seven vacant lots. 12 spec houses, and we currently have an offer pending on a spec house uh, with that sale um, looking to close mid-March. Uh, the EDA has decided not to build any future spec houses. Uh, it just hasn't, uh, it's just no longer feasible financially. Uh, so the EDA has nine vacant lots that remain unsold, prices determined by size. We have uh, sort of three sizes, small, medium, and large. We have one small lot remaining, currently priced at 12,500, three medium-sized lots priced at 15,000, and five large lots priced at 20,000. Uh, the prices on these lots were originally set at 15,17.5 and 22.5. Uh, the lot prices were reduced by $2,500 in September 2012 to the current prices. Um, at the time of that price change, only two lots had been sold in the subdivision, and after the price reduction, five additional lots have been sold. Uh, the EDA cost for each lot for the land and improvements, um, not including the street assessments, um, is about $7,800. Um, keep in mind there's potential for a $2,500 price reduction if an income, buy, income qualified buyer um, 
would uh, purchase a small or medium sized lot. There's no price reduction available on the large sized lots. Um, and I attached the um, plat map showing the uh, available lots. The small lot is shaded in blue. The medium sized lots are shaded in green and the large lots are shaded in yellow. <coughs> so I'll open that up for for discussion. Yeah, I had asked Heather just basically at this time would be a good time to start the discussion on what do we want to do? Do we want to package them all together and see if we can get a, a good sale price to move them all at one shot? Do we want to split them up? Do we want to just let them sit until they sell? I think now's a good time to have that discussion. I personally would like to bundle them as one package and send them out to our construction people and see if anybody's interested. What kind of hurt? <coughs> I wouldn't mind dropping the price, especially for the small and the medium, $2,500. What if we just market it and say, give us your best price? Or we could or do these that. Ex these nine lots, we want to market them, give us your best price. Let's see what they come in on. I don't know. We can always disagree. We can always negotiate afterwards. Yeah. Do you know how these prices compare to other lots going in town? or? Well, the 125 obviously is lower than you know lots you'd find in the diocese or anywhere else uh, the 15,000 is probably slightly lower uh, I think you'll find them more in the 17 area but it's 17,000 plus assessments and so you run you know probably slightly under $30,000 worth of assessments you know for your street water sewer and so when you add those up uh, you know you're sitting probably at you know Forty-five thousand dollars, you know, for that lot. Uh, our lots, if you're income qualified, you don't pay for the assessments. You and just I, pay for the lot. I think that's there's the real big difference benefit there. here. I mean, because if if you move over to Milford too, where the lot price includes those costs of assessments, they're they're talking fifty, fifty-five thousand per lot over there, and and so uh, if you look at it just at that it's a these are a steal if you want to call it that but uh it, it's getting the income qualified buyer in there and i think uh, just one thought i had is is getting back to the package thing is maybe we don't adjust the price but we offer incentives to cover the some of the costs of the assessments if somebody were to come in and buy them as a package obviously we want to cover our cost per lot in there so we keep it um, a little bit over that and but you know if you add up the tally of it what the current costs of these lots are and figure the difference I mean basically we want to get out of them and if we don't realize a huge profit I think the the, the consensus is um, we want to be done and let a builder take the risk of holding them and, and constructing new homes on them we don't want to take that risk as a commission so maybe we look at the possibility of offering some other kind of incentive um, but th I guess the the thing too is that, that is one of those things that can come in and negotiate um, with us and if they realize a better price on the lots that may free up more capital for them to look at what what their costs of adding the street improvements and, and that sort of thing in, into what when they package these homes to sell some somewhere down the road after they're built so I don't know it, it, it's I, th I think with what's going on in town, uh, these lots are going to sell. I don't know. I, I think there's, the <coughs> there's not a lot of land that's developed to the point where they're ready to put houses on unless you cross the border there and get into the Milford Heights 2 subdivision. Um, but these represent a, a better cost per lot and, and can stay in that more affordable range. So if there's somebody that's looking for, for a more affordably priced home, this is probably the only game in town, you know. So there's not very many fill lots no. that, I, that I'm familiar with. Is, is, is this... Do you have to put something like this together for us? How does it... Well, I think if we, if we looked at a wholesale of everything, I think we wouldn't like what we... What we what they came, what would come back to us as far as the price, it would be deeply discounted. It's not to say we couldn't try to market these to some developers and and uh, make us an offer on certain lots and piecemeal them. 
but the, with the affordable, with the assessment potential um, relief from assessments, like you mentioned, that that's that's the big um, advantage here, and and having some on hand to piecemeal them out over the next several years. I do think, like Dan said, they, I do think they will. Things are happening in town where they will be moving in the next couple of years. Um, I. I don't know. Uh, I guess I wouldn't. We, like you mentioned last, we could potentially have Jeff come up with a recommendation, yeah, realtor, I, as far as wh wh where to take it and and see if it spurs some more interest. Is one more of these sold or potentially sold a vacant lot? Is that accounted for in here or? Yeah, that's not included in the. So we actually have, with, there is a lot that recently sold. So there were 10, now we're down to nine. Right. We are okay. having a design review that's committee to approve that house that's already factored okay. into these numbers, yeah. So could we have Jeff come back with several options for us, recommendations for us at the next meeting? We could. Um, I think we'd probably have to look at listing them again then with Century 21. We don't currently have them probably listed. Um, so we'd be looking at paying some kind of a commission too, and you'd have to take that. You into could account. pass on our discussion with him <coughs> this morning, and say we'd like to bundle them somehow, and come back with some, and see what he can kind of throw together for us for ideas. When was we don't want him to go out and do it. We just want him to come back and tell us what our options are. When was the last time that these were actually listed? That just expired in October. Had there been much interest? Well, I mean, over the course of the last 10 years, we've sold seven. That's a no. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> That's Part why we're that doing time, this. <laughs> Part of that time they weren't listed. Part of that time they were listed. <clears throat> but I, I think all that, you know, no need to really rush it. With the other sec phase two up there, going I think that's going to stimulate some action maybe in this area too with younger couples or somebody with lower income <coughs> get some lots I don't know I mean it's not costing us nothing to sit them for a year or whatever it's just see what happens I mean as far as uh, putting options together you either wait it out yeah. right and on the other end you fire sale them and you say well you know we've got let's say uh taking into account the closing costs and all that stuff, $81,000. So let's say $9,000 a lot and just say <clears throat> minimum bid, $81,000, you know, who, who's first in line, you know, or, or put a, a you know, minimum bid and then on a certain date, collect all the bids and, and take the highest bid. And then you've got the middle of the road, uh, which is reduce the prices to try and stimulate individual lot sales. I mean, it's, there's only so many things that you know you can do with with that so as far as options um, or you know I suppose you could sit there like some communities who are really desperate sell a lot for a buck a piece and Good morning. You know. the advantage of selling them earlier <coughs> too and getting a house on them is it's collecting the, the taxes property taxes to put True. towards our yep. TIF debt well and we're paying that TIF debt as these sit empty so it doesn't there there is a holding cost in some sense of the word too Correct. so there is. um uh, what would be the process that's intriguing to me if what if we put it out for bids to contractors and say hey we've got nine lots minimum bid of x amount of dollars uh, the bidding will open here it'll close there and if we hit or get above that minimum thing we're, we're done would, would that to me, it doesn't sound like it represents, I mean, because we'll set a minimum price and we could be done with it, right. maybe in 60 or 90 days or something like that. I, mm -hmm. And to me, if someone takes that project on, they're going to want to build houses. Uh, they're going to market, they're going to get buyers, they're going to go in there and, and, right. and build the homes. We've had to kind of trudge along a couple at a time, and that's been to our own detriment, but we just don't have the resources to go in there and put in six or eight houses a year right. like a, a developer would. You know, they could potentially get those nine places built and sold within a year to 18 months or two years or whatever. And uh, with the market being what it is, I, uh, maybe the time <coughs> is right to consider 
doing a, a package bid kind of thing. Interesting concept too, yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, for right. the nine remaining lots, have mm -hmm. them bid on all nine? Yeah, just, you know, really kind of a developer builder kind of option and, and just say, hey, throw us a, throw us a bid and, and see what they say. And we just set a minimum maybe at our cost or whatever and to see if, if there becomes some com competitive bidding in the process. And We could also drop the price, though, $2,500. So your small lot would be 10000 still above um, the actual cost for the EDA. The medium size would then be dropped, and it would give <coughs> a qualified buyer an opportunity to um, purchase this. Uh, just giving a thought, because it's sat since 2012, um, dropping the price, see what happens. Can't hurt. Yeah, if we did a $2,500 price reduction and, and the smallest lot would go to 10000 if we got an income qualified buyer that got another 2500 off, we'd be at 7500 so we'd be a little bit under our cost. But if we sold the medium size or the larger size lots, we'd come out a little bit ahead, so that would balance out. Can Jeff just give us some recommendations on that option if we decide to look at that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so maybe we table it, get a little more information, and come back. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll offer that motion to table this for more information. I'll second it. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion aye. carries. Both? I opposed. Okay. Oh. You want to move? <coughs> I oppose this week. 6C. Could it consider assigning the new member of the, to the Milford Heights Design Review Committee. I'm going to vote no on this one, too. Yeah, <laughs> there you um, go. this is something that uh, <coughs> I just I missed after after Commissioner Gugesberg is no longer on uh, on the board. So we need to replace him on the on the Design Review Committee. Uh, so do you make a motion to appoint someone in his place, Les? We need to appoint someone to oh, the... Oh, we need to appoint... Oh, I was just looking at... that Pete wanted to go on it. Um, I think he appointed himself, didn't he? Or What's what I heard, too? Is that your motion? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do we have a second? <laughs> no, 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 no. How often do it's they not meet? not a real onerous job. Let's <laughs> put it that way. They meet every time we sell a lot. Um, we have to approve the house design... Um, before they build. So we have a meeting today to approve the house design uh, for 624 Fender Drive for the recent lot sale. Um, so it's once a year, twice a year. <laughs> I'd be interested. Cool. There you go. I make the motion to assign Commissioner Yanni to the Milford Heights Design Review hey. Committee. I'll second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I guess I got one question. If we sell the lo lots, we don't need the committee, right? I think we still do need still to approve do. whatever gets built on those remaining lots. So if we sell those, those the lots, covenants, these are the covenants, so they run with the property. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. So if we sell those lots off to a, a group, we have to approve every one of the design homes, yep. and mm -hmm. they would come underneath the covenants. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and we've been we've been through time allowing certain things to happen automatically, mm -hmm. just saying yes, that's a, you know we can allow that and allow this and allow this. Uh, and usually the homes that, like even the one now, they're not asking for anything special out of anything that we've already granted uh, to other home builders. So it's not extravagantly wild what they're asking for. There's just some trim work, uh, maybe a couple offs. You know, this one today is like a you're required to have a five foot setback for the garage, and they're asking for a four foot setback. I mean, it's not life and death kind of stuff. Good. I think we just want to make sure what is built up there fits well with the yeah. other houses. It's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. Okay. On favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. What's the case? Congratulations. Waiting for you to Item 60, consider a motion authorizing staff to enter into a contract <coughs> with the New Home Economic Development Corporation. I'll move it. I'll second it. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Who had the second on that? It happened so fast. Right? <laughs> when does it take effect? Is it once we approve it now, or does it backdate it to January 1st? That's one question I had. 
Well, I think we've been operating as if, <laughs> as if it was in <laughs> effect already. The um, contract expires December 31st, 2018, so it's... Yeah, but we've been making the payment, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so it, I, I would say it, it, it's, it's in effect for the year of 2018. Okay. Uh, it won't technically be, you know, in effect until the EDC signs, countersigns the agreement, so it might be another month before it actually is finalized. So if they want to give back the money we, you know, that we're paying for January and February, we'll start it on March 1st. But I don't think that's the plan. So for the, for the year of 2018. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no, motion carries. With no more business, meeting adjourned. I can see.